Hi, I think most people would agree that the most dreaded interview question is, tell me about yourself. And sadly, it's the one that's most frequently asked in an interview. So today, in this video, what I'm going to teach you is exactly how to answer that question, all of the do's and all of the don'ts. Hi, I'm Minika McMahon. I'm an executive recruiter with two decades of experience, a career strategist as featured in Forbes magazine and co-founder of The Path to Promotion, where we teach people how to accelerate their career progression in the most efficient and effective way possible. Today in this video, I'm going to teach you to answer the most frequently asked interview questions and teach you five steps to ensure that you stand out to hiring managers and ideally land your dream role. I think you'll agree with me that when you get asked this question, tell me about yourself, in an interview environment, it is an artificial and uncomfortable environment to be in. You've got either a panel of people or a hiring manager staring at you, and these are the people who have the power to decide whether you go forward in a process or not. Now, finding a really good job is important because we find more time, at, we spend more time at work than we often do with our friends or our family, and being happy at work is really key to being happy in life. So, when you're looking for a role, as I've said in previous videos, preparation is absolutely key. So if you haven't watched those videos, do so now, the links are below. And as I said before, this is the first question that is often asked, and I will teach you how to answer this question in a way that will ensure that you come across as professional and will secure that role. So firstly, let's talk about what not to do. Now, in this environment, as I mentioned earlier, because it's so artificial and you're often nervous, your natural reaction will be either to mute up or to blabber and talk all over the place. It is really important to have a system and a structure, and we're gonna go through that a little bit later in the video. But the first thing you need to understand is when an interviewer asks you that question, tell me about yourself, what they're really asking is about your professional experience. It's not an invitation to talk about your personal life. They're not after your life story, your pets, your dog, your family, your star sign. It's really around what value will you bring to this role that you've applied for. So when you hear that question, you need to reframe it in your mind. So tell me about yourself becomes what value will you bring to this role that you've applied for? Now, I'm gonna repeat that because it's really important. Reframe the question to, what value can you bring to this role that you've applied for? Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see candidates make, and I see it over and over and over again in interviews when they're asked this question, is to talk about what's in it for them rather than what's in it for the company. I'll give you an example. Here's one that, that happened reasonably recently, and it was for a very senior marketing management job, and the candidate started with a really great um, example of how they built this great marketing consulting business, and they were talking about the various clients and the various industries that they were working for, and they were talking about providing strategic marketing advice, and that was all great. But then they said something along the lines of, you know, I'm really sick of giving, um, writing strategic plans and not being the person to implement them. So I wanna be the one who's the client and I wanna see my plans through, fine so far. But then they went on to say, I really like this company because it's close to my house. Um, I can see on your website that there's flexibility. I'm really after stability and I don't wanna be a consultant anymore. So that answer was all me, 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 and that is not the way to go. You wanna demonstrate your qualifications, your experiences, and why you are a good fit to the role. And remember, the hiring manager or the interview panel has already seen your resume or read your cover letter, so you don't wanna just regurgitate your resume point by point. What you wanna do also is not start from school years and then tell this big long life story of your professional history because it's often too long. So buckle in, I'm about to launch into the five key steps on how you can answer this question in the best possible way. So step number one, do. Tell your experience and professional background in a story. Now, you want this story to be compelling, you want it to be engaging, but more importantly, it must be relevant to this particular role. So in the previous video, I taught you about the level of research you should do when preparing for a role, and that also should be applied here. So if you haven't seen that video, do it now, the link is below. So what you wanna do is give a snapshot of your work history and experience, but linking it to how it's relevant to the role. Describe the company that you worked for, describe the role that you had, and then outline your key achievements. You also wanna outline responsibilities for the position. For example, 
Let's say that you're a, you started your career as a property analyst and now you're a fund manager and the role that you've applied for is for a listed property fund. What you want to do is outline your experience of research and analytics and how that would be applied to this particular role. You might say something along the lines of, during my time at XYZ, I analysed these types of assets up to the value of $100 million and it was for both acquisitions and disposals. What that taught me in, this, in that role was, insert relevant experience, and how that will be relevant to this role is, insert, and then given my performance and achievements and then outline those achievements, I was promoted into the role of junior fund manager. Now in this role, my responsibilities included, insert responsibilities, and you want to do this for every relevant role up to your current role. Note that I say relevant roles, don't want to hear about your experience working at Woolworths in high, in, at university, it has to be stuff that's relevant. Now step number two, you want to make sure that your mini stories are outcome orientated. A big mistake that candidates make in interviews all the time is they outline responsibilities that are really obvious. As an example, people might say, let's say you're going for a sales representative job and you've been a sales representative before. You don't want to say things like, as a sales representative, my responsibilities included managing geographical territory and selling products to customers. That's obvious. That's literally every sales executive of all time. So you want to make your answers as quantitative as possible. So let me answer that question again. You might say something along the lines of, when I started in XYZ roles as a sales representative, I inherited a customer base of 30 customers with an annual revenue of 600,000. After 12 months, not only had I added an additional 10 customers, but I had increased the average spend of the existing customers. My sales budget for the year was 680,000 and I achieved 873,000. So see what I've done there? It's quantifiable information as relevant to the role. You wanna make sure you're outlining your major accomplishments for every role. So what is a major accomplishment? An accomplishment is when you increase revenue, when you save costs, when you um, increase outputs, you make systems better, or you add to profitability in any way. So for every role, try to include at least one major accomplishment and then try to link it to the job that you've applied for. Right, step number three, as much as possible, try to demonstrate your understanding of this role. Now, if you've gone through this job through a recruiter, you need to have grilled them to the nth degree about what the key deliverables are of the role that um, the hiring manager wants you to deliver. Again, I do cover how to do this in my how to prepare for a video, how to prepare for an interview video. Make sure you watch that. It's time to acknowledge to the employer now what they're looking for and then link it to your skills. For example, going back to the fund manager ex uh, example, you might say something along the lines of, I understand that in this role of, as a fund manager, you do need to re prepare reports for shareholders because this is a listed fund. Whilst I haven't worked for a listed fund before, in my role at XYZ, my governance and, ex and reporting experience included, insert, and then you want to talk about your transferable skills there. So what you might say is something along the lines of, I've spent time reading your annual reports and shareholder updates, and I really believe that I have the skills and experience to um, bring written communication at that level and what is required to deliver this outcome. And if you wanted to go over and above here, and I recommend doing this, you might have brought a prepared example of your written work to discuss. So what this does psychologically as well is it tells the panel or the interviewer that not only are you aware of your skills and experience as it relates to this role, but you're also aware of any gaps and you've identified a way to ensure that you're going to mitigate those. This level of preparation, this level of awareness will set you apart from your competitors and your peers. Step number four. You need to tell the employer why you're interested in the role. And again, not about me, 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 but this is the piece that most candidates miss. So what you really wanna do is make sure that the employer really understands what brought your attention to the role, why you applied for it, why you're interested in it, and how you think you can contribute. For example, you might add, Due to my strong background in analytics, then moving into a fund management position, I feel like the next obvious step in my career progression would be to work for a listed fund. I'm really excited to work for this organisation because of these types of assets, insert, 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 not only because of the portfolio, but also because of the research I've done in the company, the values which I feel are aligned with mine, and that's led me to be really excited about this opportunity. 
I also love it when candidates at the end of this question make sure that there's nothing that's been missed. So for example, you might say something along the lines of, that's the summary of my skills and experience to date as it relates to the role. Is there anything else you'd like to know about or anything that you think that I've missed? Generally, a panel or an interviewer smiling and nodding, uh, their heads um, in agreement will tell you that you've hit the mark if you followed this structure. The reason many interviewers ask this question right out of the gate is they're actually wanting to see your presentation skills and understand how prepared you are. Uh, so in this regard, I actually understand why it's a very frequently asked question because they've seen your resume, they've read your cover letter to the point where they've decided that you have skills and experience that are interesting enough to invite you to an interview and now they want a taste of the real person. So you may have already been Googled, your social media accounts might have already been looked at, but even if they haven't done any of that, what they're really wanting to do is see the difference between your written work and your presentation skills. So you'll probably see that they're holding your resume in your hands and they're looking at you and they wanna see who you are as a person and how you can communicate. One of the things that I think is fundamentally flawed about the interview process is that the environment is just so artificial and there's not many jobs where sitting in a chair and answering behavioural interview questions is part of your job. However, if you can reframe it in your mind to see this as skills that as you move up the ladder will become more important to you, it's a good way to sort of motivate yourself to practice. So for example, if you're moving into a leadership role, you're going to need to present to teams. If you've got a media facing aspect to your role or you need to give shareholder updates, it's going to be really important that your presentation skills are strong. So think of this time as preparing for your interview as a way to develop your leadership and communication skills and you might find it a little less daunting. One of the things I'm really grateful for as a recruiter is in the first few years of my recruitment experience was that I was recruiting, recruiting senior sales based roles. And let me tell you, salespeople all can sound really good. They're very good at presenting, but only a few people are really top performers. Um, a lot of people are talk, talk, talk and, and don't walk the walk. And then when I changed firms, I started recruiting in areas that were prim primarily technical in nature. So lots of engineers, um, people from construction backgrounds and, and places where typically introverted people are, are drawn to. And what I learned very quickly is that the best interviewee on the day doesn't always translate into the best employee, but the reverse is true. If you can't perform well in an interview, you're less likely to get a job that you're really interested in, which is the whole reason why I've made this video for you. Now, the other thing you need to remember is that even in highly technical roles, you still need to interact with people, whether that be internally, whether it be with clients. And so presenting on a topic that you know nothing about is pretty unfair. What better way to assess someone's presentation experience than to ask them about a topic they know a lot about themselves? So in that regard, I think it's a fair enough question. But what is your interviewer actually interested in? So in addition to the content, which we've already covered, they wanna see that you can speak without stuttering and, and flipping all over the place. They wanna see how you're gonna fit in with the team. They're gonna to wanna to see your communication styles. Are you charismatic? This is really important with regards to leadership roles. So this brings me to step number five, which is practice. If you were going for an exam at university and you got one of the questions in advance, wouldn't you prep for it? Of course you would. So please, please, please do the same thing here. In all likelihood, you will be asked this question or something like it. So make sure you do your research and practice. Do your research and practice. So talk to your friends, talk to your dog, practice in front of your mirror, whatever is going to make you more comfortable. And you need to practice like crazy. You need to practice until your speech and delivery becomes second nature to you. It needs to be smooth sailing. And it's all about eye contact and allowing your personality to shine through. Remember that eye contact and smiling goes a really long way. If you feel comfortable to make a joke, please do so. Your reply needs to feel natural. So what you need to do is you need to practice until you can perform this answer to the question, but in a way that makes the interviewer feel as if you're just speaking to them and it's coming naturally. The last thing I will add is it is okay to bring notes into an interview. Please do not write a script because that all picking it up and reading from it is one of the worst things you can do in an interview. Just bring bullet points of all of the key things that you want to address. 
One of the things that will help you is it's really great to refer to that at the end of the question and avoid you from leaving that interview feeling like, damn, I should have said this or I forgot to say that. So you can just refer to it at the end of the question and make sure you've hit all of your points. I've even seen a candidate, in fact, bring a presentation to the interview in the, in the knowledge that this question was probably going to be asked. And so when the interviewer said, tell me a bit about yourself, this candidate said, actually, I was expecting this question. And I've just prepared a little presentation, if that's OK. And she handed around to the panel a table of all of the key criteria in the role and how her skills and experience were aligned and then talked the panel through it. Needless to say, that candidate really got the job. So I promise you, if you follow these, follow these five steps that I've outlined today, you will absolutely stand out above your peers and competitors. What other interview questions are you keen for me to talk about? Drop me a comment and I'll make sure that the next video addresses these. I've really enjoyed making this video today and if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe because it helps the overlords at YouTube know that the content is good and it helps other people to find our content as well. We've also included some free resources to help you to get ahead in your career. You can download those at the top of our channel. It's our employee's guide on how to get a pay rise, a promotion or more perks at work. I think you'll find it really useful. Thank you again for joining me on the channel. I'm Minika McMahon. Have a great day and good luck with your interview.